Potential investors in Elon Musk's new artificial intelligence startup XAI reportedly looking at Musk's track record in his other endeavors, including OpenAI. Joining us right now is an early investor in OpenAI, Jeff Lewis, a, managing, a founder and managing partner of Bedrock, the VC shop, has been invested in OpenAI since 2021. Good morning to you. Hello, Andrew. Good to see you. So help us with this, because before we even get into it, there, there's, a, there's a debate going on about whether, in fact, and there's a lot of reporting that suggests that Elon Musk has been working on trying to raise money for XAI, yet at the same time, we've now heard from Elon Musk on Twitter saying that he's not doing that. What do you know? Well, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a private investigator, so I, I, I don't know too much about, about what he is doing or isn't doing, but I, I certainly think that Elon is uh, one of the most talented people on the planet at raising money. So. If he's trying to raise money, I imagine he'll, he'll get it done. When you think about the creation of OpenAI, and he was involved heavily in terms of financing it from, from the outset, he has been very vocal about his upset and frustrations with what OpenAI has turned into. You're on the other side of that. What do you think? Well, look, I mean, I think the reality is there was some sort of a power struggle there uh, with, uh, with Sam Altman and, and Elon. I don't know the specifics of it. And but honestly, I think what OpenAI is turning into is, is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you're talking about uh, a product with ChatGPT that I think has something like half the active users that, that X has today uh, for a product that was la launched just over a year ago. You have a deep partnership with Microsoft where they're going to be expanding aggressively uh, into the enterprise over the year to come, which I'm very excited about. And you have uh, a company that's on a path to a true technological breakthrough with AGI over the the many years to come. So frankly, I can understand why Elon might be a little bit, a little bit upset. I mean, I would, I, I think he's again one of the most brilliant people on the planet. I think the big question with X dot AI is, is this going to be a, uh, you know, the original vision of OpenAI of being a nonprofit endeavor? Or is this going to be for profit? And if so, how does it actually uh, make money and compete with with OpenAI, which is already you know, really hyperscaling on the monetization well, well, that's side. Well, that's what I want to ask you about the scale piece. And not just the scale piece, but also the development piece. What do, yeah. you, what do you think about the defensive moat, if you believe there is one, around OpenAI or, frankly, BARD or, or any of the, the, the large language models today, which is to say that if you throw enough money and computing power at the problem, can somebody else catch up? I mean, I think I think the reality today is um, these models are already running out or are pretty close to running out of uh, of actual training data. I think we're reaching a point where you're going to actually need the AI itself to come up with synthetic data uh, to further fine tune the models. And I think really the game now uh, is about one um, expanding AI into the enterprise. And I think OpenAI is is clearly the lead there through the partnership with Microsoft. I'm too seeing who can actually iterate on the models with a, a lack of new training data. I'd say, Andrew, my concern about, about X.AI, if I was looking at it, is I think the, the idea conceptually of using all of the X data as training data for a model, it's conceptually very interesting. But if you double click on what's actually on X, I mean, look, there's a lot of news and uh, you all are the best in the business on news. So they can train it on giving you great news. Beyond that, the terrain on X is pretty deranged. I think I think we both agree, and so I'd be a little worried about about what that what that model ends up spitting out if the if the edge is the X training data. Personally, well, the other piece of this, and I, I remember speaking to Elon about this uh, at the Dealbook conference back in November, is the idea that there's a lot, and I don't know how you deal with this. Maybe it's all fair use, but you know, a lot of folks have been putting copyrighted material on X for a very long time. They take the best quotes, and, and that's always been done on a fair use basis. If the system could be smart enough to effectively collect up all those quotes where it's effectively replicating full-on articles, uh, that gets pretty interesting pretty quickly. The question, of course, is how you're going to confirm, you know, that the quotes were real to begin with, and that, I, I think, speaks to the issue that you're raising. Yeah, I mean, there, there's going to be uh, probably a, a lot of litigation here. We'll sort of see what see what happens. I think the copyright question is uh, is fascinating, and uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's 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 going to be a long road. Well, you know, what do you think about the legal liabilities as it relates to OpenAI? Obviously, there's lawsuits from uh, Getty Images. The New York Times is uh, is now suing as well. How does that stack or play itself out? And and what do you think the true cost is? 
You know, I, 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 in the end, I think these things get sorted out. I'm, I'm, I'm personally different. People have different perspectives on lawsuits. I, my personal uh, point of view is, uh, it's, it's very bad to sue people, and you should always try to avoid doing it. Go to great lengths to avoid doing it. I, I get why, I get why some of these publishers are suing. Uh, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't really uh, read the, read, read the, read the claims in great detail, but. Definitely something that's going to cost money for for folks like OpenAI and, and others. And these things are going to get sorted out over time. Uh, but uh, but ultimately, uh, I, I think when you have a, a mega trend like this, uh, and you're already as far along as we are, uh, the cat's kind of out of the bag.